Hello and welcome back to Tunnel Vision. My name's Taylor Gill and I'm part of the comms team at Tideway. Here on the show, we aim to give you a behind the scenes look at the work we're doing to create London's new super sewer. As you know, this giant tunnel will clean up the River Thames for generations to come by stopping millions and millions of tonnes of raw sewage spilling into it every year. But telling the story of our work has been a real challenge recently and this month is no different. A new national lockdown has kept many of us, me included, in our homes. That's why I'm talking to you today from my living room to keep you, our Tunnel Vision viewers, in the loop. Like many of you, I'm sure, I haven't been into my office since March, but thanks to the amazing work of people right across the project, our vital work has continued. You'll have seen last month that TBM Ursula completed her 7.6 kilometre drive from Kirtling Street, next to Battersea Power Station, to Chambers Wharf, next to Tower Bridge. Well, this means that the excavation for the entire central section of the super sewer is now complete, but the work doesn't stop there. Yes, we've still got around five kilometres of the tunnel left to build, but for the 20 we've already created, we now need to install a secondary lining. The primary lining is created by the tunnel boring machine itself. The front part of the machine, the part we call the cutter head, is fitted with teeth and scrapers to pull away at the earth. Just behind that, there's a bit of kit that lifts and places pre-cast concrete segments into place to form a ring. Once one ring is complete, the entire TBM uses hydraulics to push itself forward, one ring at a time. The team on TBM Ursula, for example, created more than 4,200 individual rings. To create the secondary lining, we use an entirely different method. Rather than using pre-cast concrete, we pour the concrete wet in situ. This creates strength and a much smoother surface over which the sewage can flow once the tunnel is complete in a few years' time. Now, I'm not an engineer and that is about the limit of my knowledge, but Paul Hallows is an engineer, so let me hand over to Kirtland Street so Paul can explain more. So secondary lining is a, a second skin of concrete. So we've got our primary lining now, which is our segmental lining, which you're all familiar with. And now we're going to put another concrete lining within that, just so we can assure that we get the 120 year lifespan, which the, the client requires on this project. Behind me now, you can see two sections of shutter number three. They'll actually join together and make one, one section 12.6 meters long. That's the length of each pour that we do for the secondary lining. Each pour of that would take 80 cubic meters of concrete. As I say, we've done 13 pours so far in about 16 days. The progress has gone really well to start off with, but there's an awful long way to go yet. So there you go. We pour the concrete using a piece of machinery called a shutter. But you might be wondering, that's a lot of concrete. How do you get it to site? Well, we actually create it at Kirtling Street. Rather than having trucks bringing batch after batch, we create it at ground level on site. Let me hand back to Curling Street so Aaron Harrison can explain more. Um, hi, my name's Aaron Harrison. I'm a construction engineer here at Curling Street. So what we've got behind me is the uh, co concrete batching plant. Uh, from this batching plant, we'll be producing all the concrete that we're gonna need over the next couple of years for the secondary lining works. So by producing it here, we can have the concrete produced and into the tunnel face within one or two hours. Also by having, having a concrete batching plant here on site, it means we've not got to use any trucks or put any, any vehicles on the road. In addition to that, we're also uh, bringing our sand and our aggregates. They come by barge, and then within, within each barge is a, is a thousand tons of each of the materials. So that takes roughly uh, 50 uh, vehicle movements off the road for each barge that we have on site. Once the concrete is produced, it gets brought down the chute behind us and then gets pumped, pumped into the top of the shaft. From the top of the shaft, we then drop it down 40 metres where it gets remixed again. And we've then got a, a series of rail mounted remixes which act in the same way as a, a truck we'd have on the road. They then get driven into the tunnel and up to the face of the tunnel, which takes roughly 40 minutes at the moment. Once in the shutters at the end of the tunnel, we then pump them into the face and into the concrete to its final position. The next 12 months, I think the big challenge now is getting this secondary lining process set up, get everything running smoothly, and making sure that we've got some of the top production towards the end of the year. Secondary lining is a crucial phase of our work, but it really is just one part of the work taking place across more than 20 construction sites right across Tideway. 
At Falconbrook Pumping Station, for example, the team has just completed the longest connection tunnel on the entire project. This 250 metre long pipe will link the existing pumping station to the main sewer. But rather than using a TBM to create this tunnel, they used a spray concrete line method. And in Greenwich, we've just launched another tunnel boring machine. TBM Annie, as she's known, has literally just started tunnelling in the past month or so. She's named after the astronomer Annie Scottville Russell. Born in Ireland in the mid-1800s, Annie was an astronomer and the first woman to work at the Greenwich Observatory, where she worked as one of the lady computers in the solar department, set up to take pictures of the sun. She went on to work for the Journal of the British Astronomical Association for more than three decades, and like five other inspirational women from history, now has a Tideway TBM named in her honour. Another of those TBMs, TBM Selina, has also recently just launched from Chambers Wharf in Bermondsey. Dr. Selina Fox, after whom this machine is named, founded the Bermondsey Medical Mission in the early 1900s. This machine will excavate the final five kilometres of the super sewer, going from Chambers Wharf to Abbey Mills pumping station. You'll have heard a lot about Chambers Wharf in recent episodes. This site has been home to some huge milestones on the Tideway project. We had the breakthrough of TBM Ursula and now the launch of TBM Selena. All this incredible engineering is hard enough, but the fact is that we're doing some of this work more than 60 metres underground. Well, how do we get there? We build shafts. These giant cylindrical pits can be seen from the air and we've got more than 20 of them on the Tideway project. Building these giant holes is no mean feat. So let me hand over to Marie, Perm and Charles at our site in Wapping to explain more. So the um, shaft is basically, you know when you dig a hole at the beach, um, if you dig too deep, the sides fall in. Um, and we're trying to dig all the way down to connect with the sewer that, that's, that's running along. Um, we need to uh, basically create a barrier around it so we can dig out the middle without the sides falling in. So the way we do that is with the hydrophase, um, you dig panels. Um, so you dig one panel and then you dig another one and it overlaps slightly so that they kind of uh, maintain structural integrity. Um, and they do that in a big circle, so lots of different panels in a circle. Um, so that's dug all the way down. And so yes, yeah, so we, we put a big cap and beam across the top so that basically the panels can't lean out or lean in too much. Um, or at all because we don't want them to move. Um, and then obviously then, then we can dig out the middle um, and then do all the works from there, from there on. So that's basically what the shaft is. That's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss future episodes. Let us know in the comments below what you want to see next and we'll see you next time on Tunnel Vision.